All right, in this video, we'll talk about the change base formula and, and problem solving. So solving some fairly difficult logarithm problems or logarithmic equations. So if I asked you, how could you sol solve, based on what we've talked, so far, uh, talked about so far, if I said, how can we solve 5 to the x equals 64, my thinking would be that you would go, you'd say, all right, we've got 5 to the x equals 64, and you will do the loop trick here. And so you'll say, all right, that is the same thing as log base 5 of 64 equals x. And you could just type that into your calculator and you'd get the answer. And you, that is correct, okay? That is how you do it. However, not all calculators have the ability to find log base 5 of something. Maybe they just are able to get log or natural log or, or normal log. And so what do we do in that scenario? Um, well, we employ this strategy, and, and this is something here that I'm about to show you, that you can do anytime you have a variable and an exponent, and you'll find that, that this technique will apply to so many different problems that you encounter when you're talking about discussing logarithms in whatever class you're in now and, and in future classes too. And that is that we can do what's called taking the log of both sides. What I mean by that is, let me rewrite this, okay, 5 to the x equals 64. Taking the log of both sides means like taking the log of both sides. Now, I can do this. This is just like squaring something. You can square both sides of an equation. You've done the same thing to both sides. It's a totally legit thing that you can do. What you can't do right here now, though, uh, is just like divide both sides by like g or something. Because th that's not a thing. You didn't just write in three variables. You didn't just multiply 5 to the x by L by O and by G. You were t if a log in this case is like a function. It's like an operation kind of like, right? So what does this let us do? Well, with the product rule, what this lets us rewrite this as is x, right? The x came down as a variable, and that's kind of the operating thing. That's why this is such a good thing, is we just brought that variable from the exponent down. And so now we can solve for it easily. If we just divide both sides of this by log 5, we get log 64 over log 5. And what I'm telling you is that this here and this here are exactly the same thing. And, and it's what's known as the change base formula. So this is what the change base formula is. If you have, if you're trying to find the log of some base, like says, let's say, for example, you have a log base A of M, and you want to calculate that, another way you can approach it is to say, oh, it's the log base B of M divided by the log base B of A. A way to kind of memorize this, sort of, is to say, all right, the bigger thing, which is the argument, it's larger, that's going to go on top. The smaller thing, which is the base, like it's a subscript, that's going to go on the bottom. And B can be any base. And so since it can be any base, and every calculator can do log base 10, the common log, or log base E, the natural log, you would do those, either of those. Okay, you can test this out if you want. If you want to type in your calculator, if you have a ca calculator capable, well, any calculator, right? This, this statement right here and this statement right here, they're equivalent. And the reason for that is ultimately all they are are ratios of different logarithms. Uh, the, like, the, certainly log base 64 does not equal log ln of 64, the natural log of 64, it absolutely doesn't. But the ratio of these two different logarithms, log base 64, sorry, log of 64 and log of 5, is the same as the ratio of ln of 64 to ln of 5. And so that's why they're the same. Um, now, if you have a TI-83 calculator, that's like the, it's like got a, uh, I have one right here. It's got kind of like a green surrounding to it. That can't do log base, different bases. So you have to use change base formula for those. And certain scientific calculators also cannot do uh, logs of different bases. So you'll need to use this formula. But it's not so much the formula itself, the change base formula, it's the procedure we use to get there. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here I have 3 to the power of 2m minus 1 equals 67. I could absolutely do the loop trick here, right? And I could say that this is just going to be log base 3 of 67 equals 2m minus 1. And then I can solve for m. And I could say that log base 3 of 67 plus 1 equals 2m. Divide everything by 2. So I'd have m is equal to log base 
3 of 67 divided by 2 plus 1 half. Right, I just separated those two things. But I could alternatively have not done a log base 3 thing here. I could have said something like just this, take the log of both sides. Right, so 3 to the 2m minus 1 equals 67. So let's say I took uh, just the log the log of both sides. So I was like log, log, ooh, I should have wrote that all the way. Let me fix it. It was log of 67. Well, now that's going to be 2m minus 1. I brought that entire exponent down times a log of 3 equals a log of 67. And then all I have to do is here solve, solve for m. It's a little trickier, right? So 2m minus 1 equals log of 67 divided by log of 3. Look, hey, that's that same change base formula right there, huh? Uh, and then 2m equals log of 67 over log of 3 uh, plus 1, and then divide both sides by 2. So I'd have m, m would equal log of 67 over log of 3 plus 1 half. Um, and so so, uh, oh, sorry, 2, two log, of, okay, I had to divide the bottom by 2. And so those are the, e those are equal. Now, I t to get the exact answer, you'd have to plug in your calculator, and it turns out to be about 2.41, okay? Um, and so, so e either way, you get the same answer there. And so that's what's interesting about this, because you can, it will be, be benefit you in certain situations to, to do these, ch to do basically taking a certain logarithm of both sides, either... In this case, if you took like the log base three of both sides, right? We could have done we could have done this three to the two m minus one equals sixty seven. If we take the specifically log base three of both sides here, log base three of both sides, what we'd end up with right there is two m minus one equals a log base three of sixty seven. Hey, look, that's the same thing we have right there, um, and so just different ways to approach the same problem and knowing different ways to do this and identif realizing that actually they're the same can be very useful for you. So here's another one. I accidentally showed the answer already, but this one is a little bit different because now we have E in there. And if we have E, it would make sense for us to take the LN of both sides. We can do that. And this taking the LN of both sides thing will be something you do a lot, especially when you get into like calculus and stuff. So if we take the ln of both sides here, we say ln of this and ln of this, what that's gonna do is tell is, let me not skip any steps here, that's x minus one times the ln of e equals the ln of phi, right? Well, hey, ln of e, that's saying log base e of e, right? So e to what power gives me e? The first power, so ln of e is just one. So we, we saw an example before right, in a different video where we had something like, what is the ln of e to the fourth? And it was just four. And we said it's kind of like the ln and the e just sort of cancel each other out. And they do kind of cancel each other out, but that's because the ln of e is one and we applied the product, the, the quotient rule, uh, not the quotient rule, sorry, the power rule for logarithms. Okay, so what we end up with is x minus one equals ln of five. We just have to solve that. So x is equal to the ln of 5 plus 1. Now, this answer here is exact, right? It's exact. This answer here that shows up on the calculator is an approximation. That decimal is going to keep going, right? So it depends what your teacher is asking you to do. If they want you to find the exact, exact answer, you would leave it in this form. If they wanted you to round to the nearest, like, hundredth or something, you would say it's 0.61. Okay. This this problem here is is notoriously sort of difficult for students to do because it involves a little bit of extra algebra, and so what I'm going to do first, and as indicated by what's shown on the calculator here, is I'm going to take the ln of everything. And the reason I'm choosing ln as opposed to a different log base is because ln is fewer letters. That's actually why. Like ln is two letters. All the other log base things are more than that. So if we take the ln of everything, of both sides here, ln of this, ln of this. What we'll get is after we use the the the, uh, pro, uh, the power rule, it'll be five x minus four times the ln of two equals two uh, x minus one uh, plus one times the ln of three. Okay, so then if we want to solve this for x, uh, it's not like exactly super easy because we have x on both sides here. We can't divide both sides by like 5x minus 4, divide both sides by 2x plus 1, because then we're going to have x in the numerator and denominator of a 
of a, a rational expression on one of the sides. That doesn't quite work for us. So what we're going to do is multiply everything out. We're going to distribute the ln2 and the ln3. So we'll have 5x ln2 minus 4 ln2 ln2 equals uh, 2x ln3 plus ln3. Right, you just distributed. Now we're going to combine all the x terms to one side, and we're going to move everything that's not x to the other side. So we'll say, you know, we're going to subtract 2x ln3 both sides, and we're going to add 4 ln2 both sides. Okay, and what we're left with then is 5x ln2 minus 2x ln3 equals uh, ln3 plus 4 ln2. Then we have to factor out an x from the left side. That's how we're going to get x by itself. x divided by 5 ln2 minus 2 ln3, sorry, x times 5 ln2 minus 2 ln3 equals ln3 plus 4 ln2, ln2. And then divide everything by this, this thing here. So what we're going to get is x is equal to the ln of 3 minus uh, plus 4 times the ln of 2 all divided by 5 times the ln of 2 minus 2 times the ln of 3. And you can see that's what I, I typed into the calculator there, and what you get is 3.05. Now, you could have done this another way, and I have a similar problem I'm going to do slightly differently, and you'll see that if you had applied that second technique to this problem, you'll have the same answer. All right, here we have this very similar problem, okay? So let's do this differently. Instead of taking the ln of both sides here, let's go with, like, uh, let's take like the log base 5 of both sides. Let's do log base 5. Okay, now that what that's going to let us do is something nice on the left side here. So we have uh, 3x plus 7, I'm applying the power rule here, times the log base 5 of 5 now. That's going to equal uh, 4x minus 1 times the log base 5 of 3. Well, okay, the log base 5 of 5, that's just 1. So this, this left side now is just 3x plus 7, and that's kind of nice. It's real simple. The right side still sucks, though, because I'm going to have to distribute, uh, I'm going to have to distribute the, four, the at log base 5 of 3 into both of these things. So I'd have 4x times the log base 5 of 3 minus the log base 5 of 3. Now, if I'm going to solve for x, I'm going to move all the x things to one side and all the, the non-x things to the other side. So... We're going to subtract 4x log base 5 of 3 from both sides. And then add, subtract 7 both sides. 7. Okay, so uh, that's going to give me something gross here. It's 3x minus 4x log base 5 of 3 uh, equals negative log base 5 of 3 minus 7. Okay, now let's factor out the x. So that's x times 3 minus 4 log base 5 of 3 equals negative log base 5 of 3 minus 7 and then divide both sides by what x is being multiplied thereby so x equals negative log base 5 of 3 minus 7 divided by 3 minus 4 log base 5 of 3 uh, and so that's the answer right that is the exact answer there but you could type that into your calculator and you'll get uh, you'll get this negative 28.49. Now it, I challenge you to to do to do the method where you take the ln of both sides of this, right? So you would say you would say ln of this, ln of this, and then bring the exponents down and solve for x, just like we did in the previous example, and see if you also get negative 28.4989 You will. Okay, just to prove it to yourself that that works. Let's look at one more problem. Okay, log of x plus log of x minus 15 equals 2. So here, we can actually apply the, apply the product rule, right? We can say this. We can say uh, that this is the same thing as log of x times x minus 15. That's what the product rule tells us. And now, since I know it's log, it, that means it's a common log. So this is going to be, if I did like a loop trick thing here, right? Okay, I would say that this is 10 squared is equal to, and I'm going to multiply this out, x squared minus 15x. Oh, hey, look, this is going to be a quadratic. This is 0 is equal to x squared minus 15x minus 100. And this factors. This factors to something. Let's see, 5 and 20? Yeah, so x minus 20, x plus 5. So x is equal to 20, and x is equal to 
negative 5. Now, here's a problem though, right? Can you have a negative argument of a logarithm? Let's look at an example, like let's a very simple example, log, log of like negative 1, right? So this would be saying, all right, I have a base, it's a positive number base, and I'm gonna raise it to some power to get a negative number, right? So this, this is saying 10, 10 to what power? Can't really write real, very well today. 10 to what power is negative one? There isn't any power. You cannot raise a positive number to any power to get a negative number. And so there's no way ever that you would have a negative argument to a logarithm. So when we get these two answers right here, 20 is is fine okay but negative 5 won't work because log if i said what is the log of negative 5 you would tell me there's no answer it doesn't work right you can't have an, a negative argument there so this negative 5 doesn't work and the answer to this is just 20. so those are some actually fairly difficult this is just about as difficult as it gets for solving logarithmic equations and we needed to use we needed to employ um kind of the change base formula basically or that strategy anyway as along with some of the properties of logarithms meaning the the power rule the quotient rule and the product rule and all three of those things combined as long as we know how to use them we can solve basically any logarithmic equation